Hello everyone, in this video we're going to see just how easy it is to find vulnerabilities while browsing through your target using Software Vulnerability Scanner. Welcome to the Hackerish YouTube channel where you can find different content about ethical hacking. In this playlist, we're going through the burp extensions by popularity, and now we are in Software Vulnerability Scanner. And you can see that this extension scans for vulnerabilities in detected software versions using vulnerables.com API. It has two main features. First, detecting vulnerable software by fingerprint, and it also matches the paths with the database to see if there is any exploit which can be used against that path. So let's install it. And you can see that right away we have a new tab called Software Vulnerability Scanner. I don't like to have a lot of tabs in my burp, so what I'm gonna do is just go to Extender, choose Extensions, and then remove some of the previous extensions that we worked with. Um, I'm just going to leave Active Scan++ for additional scan capabilities. I'm just going to deactivate Request Smuggler. We've seen that in previous videos. And Turbo Intruder. I think we need also to remove Joseph, JSON Web Token Attacker, just to get rid of some tabs here. All right, seems that it does the job. And now if you go to the tab, of software vulnerability scanner extension, we can see the different rules that you get right away out of the box. And these are pulled from this endpoint, which is the API of vulnerables.com related to burp rules. So it tries to detect using some regular expressions in this case. For example, if there is a underscore.js we would um, detect this as an underscore .js software being used. If we find that there is a HTML code that corresponds to this regular expression in the HTML content, then it automatically detects that this is a Splunk instance. So let's see this in action. All right, um, this is WebGoat. If you don't know what this is, I'm using the OWASP top 10 training box that you can find in the description box. You can practice with this lab along with the OWASP top 10 training playlist, which contains the most famous vul web vulnerabilities if you are new to web hacking. All right, when we refresh the page, the WebGoat instance is up again. And let me just go ahead and choose Burpsuit as my proxy. Again, everything is already explained in the OWASP top 10 playlist. So let's just uh, refresh the page. How the extension works is that when you go to the dashboard, and let me just choose target, um, sitemap, and then choose my WebGoat instance, you should see the issues in the issues panel. And whenever there is a new system being detected, it will show up here thanks to the software vulnerability scanner. So let me go to maybe vulnerable components and then choose maybe a challenge and hit go just to see if we can detect any vulnerable software. Let's go to challenge 12 and send something and see if we get anything related to a software. So as you can see, um, we don't have any special headers or content which hints what this uh, website is running, although we already know that it's um, a Spring Boot instance. Let's test this extension against OWASP Juice Shop. So now if I go to dashboard, um, sorry, target, and then choose juice shop. You can see that we have an entry with vulnerables between brackets. This burp extension has detected the software being used. So if we go to the response and then 
hit the arrow button down here, we see that we have a script which loads jQuery with this version. And in the advisory, we can see that Vols has detected that jQuery has been imported, but it was unable to detect the version and therefore no issues have been reported. Let's use that against my website. Again, just uh, as a reminder, you can go to either web application testing or bug bounty hunting. And for each one of them, you should have access to a loads of information about how to hack web applications. You also have access to Hack for Fun and Profit podcast and some resources that you can learn from. One of them is the Web Hacker Web Application Hackers Handbook. And if you want to the support, then you can buy me a copy. So let's see what we have found. Vulnerals had, has found three systems. Um, let's see what are those. In the response, we have a comment which references SEO plugin, which I used to write optimized content. The second one is the same as the first one. So three instances because we've loaded the page, the three pages, I guess. Here you have an idea of what libraries I'm using in my WordPress instance, as well as the version I'm using. Fortunately, there are no public exploits right now. But if I were using a old version, we might have some results. So in the, the advisory, you can see that we have Yoast SEO with the version number. We have jQuery and we have WordPress. To extend the capabilities of software vulnerability scanner, let's go to the options and see that we have the possibility to look by location paths. And this allows us to enumerate the paths that we are browsing. And based on those paths, if there is any signature that's registered to vulnerables.com API, we should be able to detect it. But bear in mind that this might result in a lot of false positives. So use this with caution. I'm also going to deactivate scope only, or let me just preserve the scope and then maybe add juice shop and other websites to my scope. I'm just going to copy this and put it here with HTTPS at the beginning. Now, if we try to play around with Juice Shop, we can see that we have a new entries with a red explanation mark, meaning that there is a possible vulnerability in here. Um, so let's go inside. So we have two instances slash API slash complaints. And in the advisory, we have a bunch of exploits which use the same path. For example, we have GNU C library dynamic linker, which I think is a false positive. We have Australian education app, which also seems to be a false positive. So let's click on one of those and see what we have. We get directed to vulnerables.com website with the data about the exploit. And if I search for complaints, you can see that we find some keywords here. So it's trying to take keywords from the path and looking through the database of vulnerables.com to see if we have any matching. But as you can see, this is prone to a lot of false positives. Same thing for the products endpoint. We do see that this might be vulnerable to IBM Infosphere, although we're pretty sure that IBM is not used in Juice Shop. But let's give it a try and see what we have as exploit. I guess that we have something like products or reviews. So yeah, you can see that we have many instance instances of the products keyword as well as reviews. So vulnerables on its own is a good database if you want to manually find vulnerabilities in the technology stack that your target is using. If I try to look for WordPress published exploits, you can see that we have a bunch of them. And then if we click on one of them, this is targeting web forms, which is apparently a plugin but I don't like to do the manual work. So because we have this extension, I can browse normally my target and then see if I can find any vulnerabilities automatically. 
One thing that you can you should consider doing is using an API token of your own. That way you can improve the scan speed. So it's just straightforward. You, you go to the website, you register an account, and then you grab your API key and you paste it right here. In the results tab, you can see all the results that the extension has found for the websites that we've browsed. And we can filter by name. And here you can find my previous Yoast SEO plugin, the WordPress version, underscore being used in Discuss. And for the things that are vulnerable, you can find the details on the CVSS score column and the vulnerabilities column. For example, we can find that vulners.com itself has a potential vulnerability of score 10, which is really ironic. So if we go back to um, the target and then choose vulners.com, you can see that we have two instances, but I think these are just false positives because they clearly don't target anything related to a web application technology. And it, it was able to detect this based on this um, HTML input, but this is clearly just a CSERP token, which I don't think has any security issues. Same thing for the second entry. So maybe vulnerables.com API is trying to find the CSERF middleware token keyword. Um, so let's go to our scan rules and try to find that. Actually, it would be better if I just copy this and paste it in the page and then look for that keyword. All right, so here we have a hit, but um, it includes a powered by Django, which I don't think this is the right rule that has been used to detect that um, technology to generate that vulnerability. If we paste the CSERF token content, it doesn't show up. I don't know how this rule has been triggered to show us these entries. I think this extension has a lot of false positives, so it might take some time to go through the results and filter what works. I don't think this extension is going to help me in the day-to-day -day basis. I like the fact that it automatically tries to fetch vulnerable software, but at the same time, it has a lot of false positives, which I really don't like. I might use it once or twice if I want to really focus on finding vulnerable software, but um, I don't see myself using it day-to-day. What I use is Wappalyzer, which is a, an extension that gives me all the technology stack that a website is using. So in this case, vulnerables.com is using um, Python, Recapture, Django, etc. On the other hand, Juice Shop is using Angular in the front end, Heroku as a platform as a service, um, jQuery with the version. So using this extension, I'm able to get a, a glance at which technologies are being used for a particular web application. And from there, I can orient my thinking and my strategy towards that particular set of technologies, which is really helpful. Let me know if you find any other use cases for the software vulnerability scanner burp extension. I would love to hear them, so just post that in the comment below. If you found this content helpful, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel so that you get updates whenever I publish a new video on ethical hacking and bug bounty hunting. If you're new to hacking and want to learn the basics, check out the free OWASP Top 10 Theory and Hands-on training on thehackerish.com and apply your knowledge on the lab which supports it. If you enjoy learning with videos, I invite you to watch the OWASP Top 10 YouTube playlist. However, I encourage you to first try to solve the lab exercises so that you don't spoil them. Don't forget that there are supporting blog posts for most of the videos you watch on this YouTube channel. I also encourage you to subscribe to the Friday newsletter on thehackerish.com to gain some new hacking knowledge at the end of the week.
If you enjoy listening while doing other things at the same time, check out the Hack for Fun and Profit podcast, link in the description box. Until next time, stay curious, keep learning, and go find some bugs.